Now, the latest on the increase in drug prices after a dramatic price increase for the life saving drug EpiPen, New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman announced that the pharmaceutical company Mylan is under an antitrust investigation in New York. Joining us right now is a member of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee and Florida Congressman Ron DeSantis. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. What, what is this investigation trying to accomplish? Well, I think the New York State is involving uh, antitrust, and we'll just have to see how that shakes out. I think here in the Congress, what we found, and this isn't the first example of a company doing this, is they're really capitalizing on regulatory monopolies that are created by the federal bureaucracy. There's nothing special about the drug that the EpiPen administers. It's been around for over 100 years, but any competitor who wants to compete with the EpiPen uh, runs into all these regulatory roadblocks, and so it's effectively a government conferred monopoly uh, which will just following the basic laws of economics lead to higher prices so we need to look at what the government's doing to create the environment that's leading to some of these instances well uh, congressman but will you looking at it and talking about it actually do anything about it it comes down to the fda not essentially not approving generic competitors with speed. You, you had the problem with Sanofi because there, there were a, a few instances of, of injections that went wrong. That, there was a recall there. Teva tried to introduce a generic competitor. That's really the issue is the Food and Drug Administration. I agree 100 percent. And we remember when Martin Scarelli did the increase for Daraprim, we brought in the FDA and they said, look, we don't really follow the prices. That's not our mandate. And while that's true, they, they are not involved in price controls. They have to understand how their uh, lack of action is fueling these price increases. And so I think part of it is the FDA has dropped the ball. But yes, I think there is some uh, room for Congress to enact some legislative reforms so that we can streamline this process process and make sure that these drugs are getting to market uh, in a cost-effective way. Congressman, what actual legislative reforms are you talking about to address this issue? Because we saw what Milan did is they hired a cadre of lawyers and lobbyists to squash the competition and to overburden the FDA. So what can Congress actually do to prevent that from happening? So it's not only the price increases, you have special interests protecting themselves. Oh, without question, and unfortunately, that's just the mother's milk of how modern Washington operates, and, you know, I'd like to break that up across the board, not just in this instance, but it will be tough to enact reforms because of what you're saying, because the companies that have access to the people who can lobby to prevent these types of changes, they're really in the driver's seat. It's always easier to stop a legislative reform than to actually enact it, so I think all of those things will be roadblocks, but look, there are certain uh, you know, common sense things that you can do in terms of uh, the, the, the speed in which these things have to be dealt with and removing other roadblocks that people who are well-meaning trying to bring good products to market are just getting beat down by the bureaucracy. Well, there are a lot of frightened people out there right now who depend on these EpiPens and this is an absolutely huge increase. And when I hear legislative reform, it sounds great. It also sounds like it's going to take forever. What can you do right now to ease this situation? And can you put a rocket up the behind of the FDA, basically, and tell them that change is going to come sooner than later if they don't pull their ideas out? You say pricing isn't a part of their remit, but when pricing hurts sick people as it's doing in this way, then it has a direct knocking on effect on health. And I would argue that it has to be a part of their remit. People are terrified about the price of this EpiPen going up. Real quick, Congressman. Well, I would just say that we, haven't, we don't have a hearing scheduled, but I think we will bring the FDA again in front of the Congress and uh, uh, identify some of these shortfalls. And when you get some sunlight on it, that tends to be a good motivator for them to start to change their ways. Congressman, let me switch gears for a minute because the FBI says that Hillary Clinton's staff destroyed her mobile device with hammers. I mean, literally with a hammer. Donald Trump obviously responded. Listen to this. I want to get your reaction to see if you're going to do anything about it. It's such a long answer to that question. <laughs> it could go on for days. Thirteen phones, iPhones, whatever they were, and just banging the heck out of them. How about the acid wash of the emails that didn't mean anything? How about the 33,000 missing emails that were acid washed? Okay, acid washed. And 
Rudy was telling me nobody does it because it's such an expensive process. So, Congressman, we know this from the FBI notes that were released, obviously, on Friday night after 4.30 in the afternoon on Labor Day weekend, which is ridiculous in and of itself. But we got the FBI notes. We know that Hillary's staff actually literally used a hammer to destroy at least two of 13 devices she used during a four-year period. And she used that bleach to uh, destroy the emails. Is that obstruction of justice? Are you going to uh, have an investigation about this? We are going to investigate uh, all the fallout from how these devices were handled, how the emails were erased. And I would just say, Maria, it's interesting because Director Comey rested his recommendation not to prosecute on the lack of intent. But I would ask, what intent is being shown when you're taking a hammer to blackberries and you're going to these extraordinary lengths to use bleach bit to delete these emails? If there was really nothing incriminating there, then why would you go through such trouble? Not to hide yoga lessons, I don't think. Right. And, and yesterday, Judge Napolitano told us that Hillary's lawyers told the FBI she's not going to speak to you at all if the uh, interview is recorded, so you better not record it. And the FBI, in fact, went against protocol and did not record the interview. How and is not that only possible, that, Congressman? What, are you going to well, do anything well, about that? I mean, what, can well, you do gonna, anything about conduct, this stuff? We're, we're going to conduct oversight. We have Comey coming to the Congress tomorrow and, or next week in front of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, but I would also say, not only did they not record it, they let Cheryl Mills, who was her chief of staff at the State Department, sit in the interview. She was a potential target of the investigation as well. They would never do that for the run-of-the-mill uh, criminal suspects. So there is so much about this that just doesn't follow how the FBI would normally do business. So, you're, so Congress is going to investigate this then, and you've got Jim Comey speaking to you next week, you said. We are, and then on Monday, mm -hmm. on the Oversight Committee, we're doing a hearing um, about the email issue, the deleted emails, and trying to get to the bottom from the technical side. We need to talk to some of the tech geeks about how all this stuff came to pass. Congressman, thank you. We'll see you soon, sir. Thanks. We'll be watching. Ron DeSantis there. Come